Okay guys, welcome back to Mill RC, and today we're gonna be talking about this Value Hobby 62 inch Easy Stick. Um, I purchased this model, shoot, it might have been close to a month ago, and I have slowly been putting it together. And this model here is purely for that engine on the front right there, because you can't get nothing better than a twin sill engine on an open cowled stick like this there's like no other but better model to put a twin cylinder engine in but besides the point i thought i would do a i won't call this a review a post build of my thoughts of you know how it assembles and you know just general thoughts and quality on it because i can tell you right now compared to where this comes from it does not compare to the quality to those guys um i think i was spoiled a little bit uh, putting so many of these together because there were definitely some adjusting uh, adjustments for this one but I got through it and it is together and I have flown this one time so I have made it and it does actually fly pretty darn well uh, for what I can tell the engine does need some tuning but I will get a flight video after this one but I thought I'd go ahead and take uh, show you a quick look at it so uh like i said the wingspan is 62 inches the length is 49.2 and the flying weight on the listed manual is 4.5 5.6 pounds uh with this engine on the front i'm i think right at six pounds like five and three quarter um but very close to six so uh yeah and i guess i'm going to show you the wing over here since my workshop is tiny messy and really i don't seem to have enough room for this stuff but there's the main wing so all right, so let's go ahead and pop the hatch here. This model is nice enough to come with this hatch here, which unfortunately is not on quite properly, um, but it does work. Now, in the instructions and in the kit, they give you, I don't know if you see these two holes here, uh, a hole there and a hole there. They want you to use wood screws to uh, screw this hatch on. And I, just for the easy convenience, I just put magnets on mine and so far it is holding. Um, the air has not blown it off yet so that's nice and this is where they want you to put your battery slash fuel tank but as you can see I really don't have much up here I've got a lot more going on in here mainly because this engine although it looks cool it does weigh a lot so um, as you can see I was really trying to encourage all my electronics and flight weight or all my stuff to be back as far as possible so that's kind of what the cabin looks like and I did have to modify this area in here quite a bit because the fuel tank is not meant to go here so you pretty much if you you know do an engine like this you pretty much have to put your fuel tank in here and as you can see I cut away a lot of this wood formers here and then put another sh uh, platform shelf to uh, get this tank to fit which this is a Dubro 12 ounce tank I believe which gives uh, adequate flight time for me at least. Uh, I'm used to electric flying, so I don't fly for a whole lot, which these engines can fly a lot more, but it's play enough for me. So um, yeah, I'm using a 12 ounce fuel tank. Here's how the wing is secured with these two wing bolts here, um, which I guess we'll go ahead and start uh, into the quality about the hardware because a lot a lot of people are like what's the quality of the hardware in ARF packages and this one some of the parts uh, hardware is usable and then some of them is absolutely laughable like are you freaking serious yeah, yeah not even happening so the push rods and the clevises and the uh, control arms I would say are pretty good quality um, they're not brittle they actually have a little bit of flex in them so that is nice there's the rudder push rod and here's the uh elevator right there so an interesting thing though at least for the screws that they want you to use for these control horns is they actually don't go all the way into the back plate right there as you can see they actually really hardly don't go in at all so when you're drilling or when you're uh because these holes aren't pre-drilled at least they weren't in my kit uh, make sure you more or less use the wood to hold on the control arm and not the uh, back plate. Oh, I'm sorry. I get used to my lens being on the other side of my phone, but it's on the other side, so I might miss a few shots. Yell at me if I do. <laughs> Pun intended, I guess. 
And then it uses these uh, Phillips head screws, which I actually kind of like because um, they actually thread into the plastic and they are very hard to back out. And they're easy enough just to check them with a screwdriver every now and then to make sure they're tight. So that is what I found usable as the hardware. Here's what I did not find usable. Like this, I absolutely almost laughed at. They want you to use these easy connectors with not even a lock nut and a set screw in them and with just two washers. That's like, are you serious? At least for electric, maybe that would work, but since I'm using a vibratious, vibratious gas engine, not gas, nitro, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's just an absolute no. So these are just total junk. I've had experience with these easy connectors with no nuts on them and they are, or no locking nuts, I'm sorry. And they are so easy to come undone, even with Loctite. I mean, you can lock them down, but that's just not enough reliability for me. So, uh, I recommend the Great Plains or the Dubro Easy Connectors, which I have all of these have throughout um, servos here and servo there. Which, by the way, I'm using these old Pro Modeler DS One Sixties that I had that I don't no longer use. They're not standard size they're mini size so i had to uh modify and see if i've added a piece of uh wood right i don't know if i can point it might not focus but uh, let me get a pointer here probably should turn on the lights kind of dark but see i added a piece of wood right there that's where the glue joint is uh to get those servos to screw in and i'm also using i cut out a new slot for a micro servo because that's what i use on the throttle which this is not the tank uh, position. It uh, is free, that throttle servo. Um, as you can see, my tank is not strapped down either. And that is because the main wing actually sits on this piece of foam and makes it very hard for the fuel tank to go anywhere. Uh, also the battery acts as the forward and back stop against this, uh, that wood edge right there. There's normally a piece of foam there, but there isn't now. Um, but there will be when we fly it. And then I'm actually, I don't like to power on this airplane, you know, the battery's positioned here. So I had to almost like, you have to take the wing off every time to power it. So actually what I did is probably a bad way to do it, but it's what I had and it's working for now is I put an extension on the battery lead here and ran it all the way to the front here with this hatch and then put a small extension on the receiver. And that way all I have to do to power the plane on is uh, plug these two those two wires in so um that's how my wiring setup is used on this so i guess we'll go ahead and take a closer look at the wing once again like i said this plane is uh, meant for standard servo so when i put the minis in there is a bit of a gap in between the covering um but they did err and i also did have to add a rail just like there so you can see a wood rail but it's super solid and they're not going anywhere. And I also use the, uh, these are great planes, uh, easy connectors, which are 10 times better than the stock ones. And it uses these front uh, wing dowel pins for alignment and um, those two wing screws. So, and there's no flaps on this model and it has quite a, the amount of dihedral, at least to me, maybe not to others, but when I was epoxying this wing together, the wing was absolutely terribly fitting. It's the worst wing fit I have ever seen. As you can see, there's a gap up front here. This is the best I was able to get it. And because of its loose nature, there's epoxy marks everywhere. Fingerprints, which is great. Not what I really wanted, but I guess I'll have to deal with it. And like I said, I really don't care much about the airframe. I just care about this beautiful uh, engine there. And I don't know if I can put the wing on because um, I need to, to turn the airplane this way and hopefully I can get the wing on. As you can see, I have absolutely zero room. <laughs> now I'll show you another thing on this airplane that I don't particularly care for. And it kind of reflects just the price and quality of this thing. But as you can see, there's just a big old doesn't even fill that in it's just a block <laughs> a wood block normally i'm sure a lot more expensive brands would not accept that but 
that's how this one came and that's what it is and i really don't like i said i'm not too perturbed about it so uh another thing i did not use are the eels that came in the kit number one for a plane like this uh it's much better if you get some dubros uh here are the stock wheels they actually are mm, they're kind of hard and this hub design is super brittle plastic in my experience with these uh cheaper arfs so i didn't really like these so i threw these out and i forget the diameter of these but i think they're like two inch or uh let's see here i got a quick ruler we can get an estimate here uh yeah maybe two and a quarter inch wheels but i opted for these dubros uh 3.25 that are much better. They have some uh, squish in them and well, bigger wheels always look better, right? On a plane like this, so. Yep, I'd say so. Uh, another thing I like is the landing gear. Uh, it's actually an aluminum stock. It's nice, it's not an expensive carbon fiber and it's not like a wire. I hate wire landing gears. Um, no matter what airplane it is, it doesn't, it looks stupid. So I hate wire and it's, and a lot of time the spring wires are just way too springy and just cause problems. So this flat aluminum landing gear is really nice and I like to uh, use that. Um, as far as mounting this engine, uh, I am using the stock screws, which quite personally, I don't recommend. I, I'm, I'll use them for now, but probably uh, eventually they will um, get changed out. I don't know where I put the, uh, oh, here they are, the oh, bolts I was gonna say. But as you can see there, oh, maybe not. If it can focus here, there we go. Uh, Phillips head that, and this, they're Phillips head, not hex, which hex is my favorite. And they're also super soft. So for mounting the engine, I probably recommend getting some uh, harder steel uh, hex head hardware. And then there's blind nuts included with the kit, which I did put in the back. And then I also uh, locked the, put lock nuts on the back so this engine ain't going anywhere um it's really secure so it looks uh so yeah and it does fit on this firewall when i first got the plane i didn't think it would but it does really fit on there really well um with just a little bit of clearance to give i don't know if you can see there there's just a little bit of clearance i think on top and bottom yep so Plenty of room to mount this engine and probably a 100T if you want to go that far, although this air, this engine is well powered for it. Um, but even with, an, oh, and here's my receiver placement. I just put it on the side there. And I am running Spectrum uh, because I still have a lot of Spectrum receivers. And quite honestly, with these engines, your radios gets kind of oily. And I really don't want to do that to my nice, beautiful FR Sky radio. So um, that's why I'm using that. So I do use Spectrum still sometimes, all you FR Sky haters. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but even with all putting all the uh, tank, electronics, batteries, etc., up there, I did have to add some tail weight right there. That was the only place I could really think about putting it. Um, once again, I'm not too concerned about the looks. I just want this thing to fly good and sound cool with this engine. So didn't really care for the... Uh, uh, weight placement although if you get this airplane you probably can if you know you're going to be nose heavy you can probably put some in before you glue the horizontal stabilizer down and you know all that so and the gluing and fitment of the stabilizers are about 90 degrees i didn't have to adjust much and it was pretty nice so um here are the axles they actually do use lock nuts which is nice um and they are and the threads on the axles are long enough so that's cool uh, they did, the wheels did come with these like plastic spacers though, and they brought the wheels out a little bit. So the axles, when I took those out and put the wheel colors on, the axles stuck out like this far, which was kind of weird. So I cut them down and I don't know why they include the spacers. Um, it looks much better like this anyway. So that's, uh, what I did. So, and, uh, Regarding the covering, it's not ultra coat. I really don't know what it is. It's definitely different. It takes a lot. I think if I recall correctly, it took a lot more temperature to work, uh, get it to do like smooth out the wrinkles. It was pretty. It was pretty wrinkly and bubbly out of the box. And there are a lot of, especially this this black covering is exceptionally or is 
exceptionally the worst <laughs> covering I've ever seen. Or I don't know. Whenever you heat it up with the heat gun, it becomes all like rubbery and I don't know. So, quite personally, I don't know how long this covering is going to last because you know glow and old oil getting in there kind of like solution covering. But if I have to recover it, so be it anyway. <laughs> so. Uh, so yes as you can see my fuel tank is all flopping around which don't worry about it when the wing is on it and i don't plan to you know 3d this thing like i can anyway <laughs> so but anyway that's pretty much all the things i have to say about this oh these hinges i didn't use these hinges either they didn't feel stout enough to me to be honest with you they're they don't feel they feel more like a plastic sheet than actual like nylon or uh not nylon uh i don't know what the material is but they don't feel fibrous at all compared to you know a hinge like this which these are the hinges i did use which as you can see are substantially larger so i don't think these control surfaces are going anywhere but yeah that's pretty much all i can say about how the build and what i think of this thing um it does fly pretty nice and i will get a flight video in eventually who knows i make it too lazy and not fly at all but um i do need to uh just run the engine and get it tuned in before i fly it again though but um that being said for the money it's not a bad gig at all um it's a lot less expensive than the uh hangar 9 ultra stick 10 cc which is what i'm gonna equivalent this to um although you you do get what you pay for um you just have to come up with your own methods you know and this as you can see here this stuff i know i've tried ironing this and it doesn't stick down so uh just leave it for now and then eventually i'll get to it maybe and maybe have to recover it someday but that's all I can think of right now for the uh, Value Hobby Easy Stick. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them out down in the comments. Um, but prior to this, I will get the engine running properly and then we will get a flight bid. So stay tuned for that. So I know this video is pretty long, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching Miller RC and tune in next time.